Just a little over a year ago, four young Paducah couples discussing old buildings in the city over dinner lamented the fact that the city would lose part of its architectural heritage when such buildings were torn down. They agreed it was a shame no one had started a preservation effort. And with that agreement, Walnut North, a preservation partnership, was formed. We would like to see a turnaround in the neighborhood. We feel that, that the north side of town and particularly this area, is at its lowest ebb. Um, I can tell it's going to take some time because we're trying to, to trace families through, say, city, old ancient city directories, and we were able to trace one the other day to 1857 on that, in that two-block area. I, I feel that that's a mistake to, to deny an old masonry building the charm of its age. Uh, and sandblasting a uh, uh, brick removes its harder outer surface, and uh, that is irreversible. We are hoping that we can turn the neighborhood around so that we can see a revitalization. Time is always moving forward, ideas are always moving forward, the work is now moving forward. I used to be very um, conscious of when saying something was done, it was sacrosanct, and that's done, it doesn't get touched again. And I'm much more loose with it, it's not working anymore, if it doesn't mean anything to me visually, then it's like there's no reason to save it. I thought it was done, it's obviously not, let's keep going. Some of the pieces I have, the personal archaeology, where one side is the finished surface and one half, I just buff that surface down to find that one layer underneath, that bit of information underneath. It's getting below the surface of anything, um, finding the essence of something, digging down to find what made this image, this object, this sound be what it is. No, no place is a done deal. I mean, you have New York City, it's constantly evolving. It's never, never ending. Small towns are the same way. It's like the only way there would be complete resolve and finish here is when everybody's dead and gone. No, as long as there are people breathing, things are going to be changing. It just has to be that way. This is from Tuesday of April 7th, 1981, as the City Commission takes its first of two votes on the historic zoning. A quote from my brother in this is that you cannot protect the potential after you've lost it, which means you cannot restore a home after it's been demolished. When it's demolished, it's gone. If a community doesn't believe its history is important, it's not going to be an outsider that decides for you that it is important. But think about this. Disney World is built around its entrance being a three-quarter scale version of the town where Walt grew up and he recreated it there. And people love it. Well, if you love it at Disney World, why wouldn't you love the real thing when you get home? Our history is an indication of who we were and who came before we were here. A 26 square block rezoning is an enormous undertaking and accomplishment for the city of Paducah. You don't choose art, art chooses you. I mean, I started out my adult life as a physician, never expecting to uh, do what I'm doing now. Uh, and things happened that were, caught me totally by surprise. So, and I've often wondered why I paint 
and why I paint what I paint. I began wanting to go back and you know, reach out to old friends. And at the same time, I was doing it with my work. I photographed all my work for years, so I had this immense file of uh, my paintings. And I enjoyed going back, going back more and more. With you saving bits and pieces and saving, whether it's film or images, there's gonna be a time when you can go back and you will really appreciate, you know, having them. Uh, it's just, to me, it's just a part of the phenomenon of uh, getting old. I've always joked around, I should have been a drawer, you know, all you gotta have is a pencil and a piece of paper. Ceramics and printmaking and these types of art are a little more intensive as far as needing a real studio space, needing real equipment that costs money and takes up space. And it, it becomes difficult to figure out a way to incorporate something like ceramics into your life in an easy way. I mean, that's really what fired me up about moving down here. That was one of the main things was to be a part of something bigger than myself and uh, I was really excited to be down here the very especially at the very beginning the first few years were just so exciting watching this thing grow up around me it was really amazing modern efforts at revitalizing lower town centered around this group Walnut North there was a much bigger job that needed to be done than could be born just on the backs of this group of four couples. I mean, our house was scheduled to be demolished. We had crime, we had drugs, we had lots of problems in Lower Town. And they decided that the city would uh, begin to acquire some properties and make them available at reasonable prices to people who would um, repair, fix up, and use these properties. And I think the city saw a way through a couple of gentlemen to turn it around, pitch it as an arts community, and leverage that into a productive neighborhood. I was living um, in Berkeley, California, and a friend told me about Paducah and this idea of artists relocating to this little town to create something new. Um, and it sounded intriguing. Everything that sounds so easy and cool and Immediately, anyone would say, yeah, I want to be a part of that. That sounds great. All of a sudden, there's all these human beings that live here, and there's these other human beings that own these houses, and you it's not like we came into an empty, burned-out shell and built this thing. Um, there were some real stories. And the suspicious fire of a railway owned property took place about a year after someone began to suggest it had potential for redevelopment. As I said on the night, there was a 40 mile an hour wind out of the north and the fire uh, began in the south and spread into the wind. <laughs> Occasionally you still hear somebody will say, well the city built all those homes or the city gave all that money so the artists could, could build these houses. No, that isn't what happened at all. What happened is that the city came in and through code enforcement acquired many properties and those that were salvageable left up and those that weren't tore down. The police department worked with us, the planning department worked with us. And so consequently what happened is people did not like the scrutiny they were under, so they ended up moving out of that neighborhood. We're going to save the historic district, we're going to get these artists together and try to corral them into some kind of business model that's going to become something. Most people can't do that. So Paducah Bank was really instrumental in being one of those many little things that helped create this, this neighborhood. It seemed like it was a win-win for us and the community. We would give back to the community in the terms of favorable loans that were used to attract artists here. And uh, in exchange of giving back, we would see the joy of a heretofore dilapidated neighborhood totally rehabilitated. So there was, a, there was an immediate bonding for those of us that came in very early and as new artists came, you can imagine the excitement. I mean, I can remember a couple years after being here, walking a half a block to buy some supplies and walking in another direction for a block 
to have my work framed. I mean, it was all right there. I think at the heyday, we had about 60 artists living in this four block radius here, which was really cool. We had galleries and we had things happening. You know, reality set in for a lot of people that this is Paducah, Kentucky. It's a small town. Um, unless you had art connections to begin with, starting an art career from scratch is really difficult. So kind of peaked and then it kind of crashed and then it started rising again over the past few years. If we were going to become a real artist community, then we ought to have an art school. And it became a, a big success, a far larger success than, uh, than the city had ever dreamed of. The college always entered into it as a vehicle to promote economic development in our community, as well as uh, providing a culture that we could all enjoy. If you had a place that valued arts, that saw it as a, a vehicle to bring in people to our area as a destination, that you came here for arts education, or you came here for workshops, or in an arts community, you knew that you would have entertainment, you knew you would have restaurants to go to. Right in my own neighborhood, within walking distance to my house, I have this amazing studio space. Everybody has always known that we need a lot of working artists, a lot of creative people, young people. Nothing can live without new life, new input all the time. We can't let these things die because they don't look exactly like they did coming out of the gate. They have to be given room to breathe. They have to be given room to evolve. And I think that's what Lower Town is doing right now. It's evolving. And what our guests are going to see when they come to Lower Town is they're going to see the evolution of that project. Our city is just getting started with that that we were able to get the UNESCO designation because of our history and because of who has come before us. We have the opportunity now to flourish with our UNESCO Creative City designation because we're all willing to participate. Yes, Kentucky and arts and crafts and bourbon and horses. Yes, everybody gets that. We don't need to go down that road ever again. We get it. Let's move forward and surprise some people. So that's me on my soapbox for now. <laughs> that's where I would like to see things go. Our job is to create so that others know how much they're loved, that they are loved, that they're not alone. And you can give yourself to that, um, to kind of speak life into people. That's what Lower Town is. It's a rhythm of the city, and, and there are other great parts. I love so many parts of this city, but people change their rhythms. I changed my rhythm to be in Lower Town. Lower Town has this special vibe and thing um, and culture for our city, and, um, and I, don't, I wouldn't live anywhere else. Your community is larger than the buildings, the streets, and the sidewalks. It's all about the people who live here. Love and passion drive us to make good decisions that benefit our community and the broader aspect of our life in the community. It's not just about ourselves. Love and passion are about reaching out to other people. That's Paducah's secret, I think. Through our commitment of love and passion, we can make it even better. And I think that distinguishes us. Love and passion drives us to do unique and special and extraordinary things.